What's up guys, it's Ray J back with another video and this one I want to talk about some very important dates coming up for the markets. I'm going to tell you guys about why I think there's going to be a corrective cycle coming very, very soon, either approaching the election or maybe even a little bit after it. And then there should be a big recovery between November and December. I'm going to break down exactly why I think this, this is going to happen, what seasonality suggests and what I see for SPY and the QQQ. But just know that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link. If you deposit $100, you're guaranteed five free stocks. If you deposit 1000 bucks, you're guaranteed 15 in total. And the offer ends very soon in just two days. Anyways, now let's talk about the market. So one thing I oftentimes go over on this channel is the fact that the market has cycles. We have a tendency of moving in these cycles. If you look at the election year seasonality pattern, it aligns very, very nicely with the market right now. So what I mean by that is this, if you kind of like take this uh, chart and you kind of put it right over here, you will see that this is very similar to what the market's doing right now. So when you look at, if we just ignore everything, we just look at the daily charts. And if I close this, oops, I think I have to keep the indicators in order for me to keep this uh, image right over here. Look at the seasonality, right? You guys can see that this aligns very, very nicely with the way the market has been moving. So if you look at, for instance, if we go back on the daily, just like this, you will see that these moves are resembling very, very nicely. Uh, if you look at what this is showing us, the market starts off with this big rally going into basically May. This is what this chart was showing us into like the April, sorry, the April period before it starts to correct. That's what tends to happen. If you look at what the market did, okay, we started off with this very, very nice looking rally. We rallied all the way for the first couple of months until April. So the market, it did do the same thing. It basically rallied from uh, November straight up to, until like, you know, the April period, it just kept going and going and going. As soon as April comes, the market dips. And this shows us that, I know it's a little hard to see, but once we're in April, the market dips. This is what happens during election years in terms of cycles, right? And then, we also tend to see some downside in May before we bottom, and then we start bouncing in May going into July. So May to July is bullish. You guys can see right over here, it's showing you that right there. What did the market do from May to July? We have May right over here. As soon as we hit May, the market started rebounding. It was actually still dropping a little bit into early May before it started to rebound. And then going into July, mid-July, the market found this top and got this big little correction all the way down here in August. All right? so. Does that tell us that? Yeah, it shows us the same thing, essentially. Basically, in this in this period right here, okay, we tend to rally and rally and rally approaching July, and then we start to dip again approaching August. That's what tends to happen right over here. This shows us that in August, we do we kind of like dip approaching August, then we start to bounce. Uh, we come down again in August before we start to bounce again for September, and we start this rally. Now, despite the rally that continues, uh, there are periods during all election years where we get this correction phase again. I know this green line right here doesn't show it because that's like the, the top election years. But the, the black one right here shows you that we tend to get this pullback period between October and November. And this tends to happen almost every year for the markets before turning very bullish after the election. So once again, this is very accurate because we did get that corrective phase in you know like august we came back up and then we started to dip again entering september we, we remained bullish just like how this was a little bit more bullish until we start to slow down towards the end of september going into october and november so this is telling us that there could be this corrective phase in october slash november there's a good chance the market's going to be doing that i'm going to talk about exactly why i think that so the first thing we have to look over is going to be the next catalyst which is going to be cpi and then we have CPI right over here. Then we have the election. Then we have FOMC. And then we have like that Thanksgiving period, which is when the market tends to uh, turn a lot more bullish. So I'll be watching all of these very, very carefully. I'm going to go back to the four hour time frame to now talk about this. So what do I see for the market, at least from here? So what's going to likely happen is because we're slowing down right now and we're just barely at our uh, very, very key uh, uh, 20 EMA, we're kind of losing this. I think the market could start to dip a little bit from here. We might actually see a dip on SPY back down to this 565 area. Could it go a little bit lower? It depends. It could dip a little bit, but I don't think we're just going to start to turn a super bearish immediately. I think there could still be a bounce and we could try to hold up temporarily 
like this, whether we establish a lower higher not before we start to sell off approaching the election. So by the CPI day, which is going to be October 10th, that is when the market could start this dip and it might start as soon as we approach the election. Now, I want to call out that we also have this unfilled gap down here in the 530s. So during this period of risk, I wouldn't be surprised if the market gets a big sell off and we start to dip all the way down and we, we may, may even see like a crash approaching the election all the way down to fill this gap before we see you know that recovery move after the election. This is like the first possibility where we start to recover and then we see a big squeeze to end the year and we start to break to highs all over again, right? That is how, how the market could end up moving. If you think this move is unrealistic, look at the facts that the market kind of like was at 565 back in July. Then we got this big drop in August all the way down to the 510s only to make a full recovery within a couple of months. So the market can make a full recovery pretty quickly. That's what I'm basically seeing. However, I don't know if we're about to start the, the corrective phase right now or if it's about to start like a couple of weeks into October, maybe a little bit after CPI dates. We're still yet to determine that, but I still believe that during October, there's going to be a period of risk and we're going to be starting that downside move uh, basically during the first, if not second week of October. When we dump, I don't know. Now I'm going to go over something else. I don't know if we are going to be entering a bearish phase basically approaching the election or if it's going to continue maybe a little bit after the election as well that's another possibility i'm still trying to determine if that's going to be end up being the case because i'm not as sure during this period right here in the middle this is when there's going to be some uncertainty about whether or not the market's going to bottom so see how i have this like bearish phase right here i have this like red square to show that to you i have this green square to show you that this is the recovery phase just to give you guys more insights about that and then in the middle we have the yellow the yellow is basically our period of uncertainty so right over here i'm going to make this yellow this is when we're not as certain about what the market's going to do so what i think is going to happen is somewhere approaching the election or maybe a little bit after we're going to turn bearish and the market is going to be looking for some gap fills and for a big correction but then after the election, whether it's as soon as FOMC comes on November 7th, or is it going to be like maybe two weeks into November, somewhere around that period, the market's going to find its bottom. It's going to be looking for a nice rebound, and we're going to finish the year strong, most likely. I think that's what's going to most likely happen. We could start to squeeze as soon as the election is over, depending on who wins, or we may continue to fall for a couple of weeks before we get that big bounce. It's got to be one of those two, so I'll be watching this carefully. What I think could also be happening is there may be some ge geopolitical issues that kind of change things up. It's also possible the market kind of like uh, consolidates a bit and maybe goes a little higher. We might not be done with our bottom yet. We consolidate like this. And then our, our downside move may not start until uh, like approaching the election. Maybe even like after the election, we continue to see this downside move and we get one big drop. And then we start this big recovery move like afterwards, right? This could be a little bit delayed. So my my thesis is that the market is going to dump soon and it's going to bottom okay it's going to bottom basically uh very very close to the election if not a little bit after the election we're going to be finding a nice bottom thanks to seasonality and then we start the big recovery starting in the, either the beginning of november or maybe two weeks into november most likely i think that's when this is going to end up panning out so i hope that's as clear as possible that's what i'm seeing for the markets we're going to be looking for this little corrective phase when you look at this from a fibonacci retracement standpoint just like this you could see that uh, this is no different from what we've seen statistically and historically whether we hit the 0.618 retracement to find our bottom, or if we go a little bit above that, so we actually dump all the way down to the 0.786 to get very close to that 530 area if we manage to break all-time highs. So for now, I think the market dips a little bit right over here. We retest 565. We could get a bounce off that and retest all-time highs, if not try to break them into early October. And then we should be looking for a corrective phase by mid-October, all the way down approaching the election. I think the market's going to be sinking very hard we either bottom before the election. So this is like the first contingency right here. We either bottom before the election and we start the recovery move right after the election. Or, and don't forget, we also have FOMC after that. So it depends on if the Fed gives us another 50 basis point cuts or not. Or what's going to happen is we, we start our correction already in mid-October, but then it may continue past the election. It might actually continue for a couple of weeks past the election, approaching the Thanksgiving period. And then we should be looking for a big bounce by December. So for October, 
I think that the market could still start, it could remain elevated for, you know, a week or so. And then the corrective phase should start sometime in October. By mid-October, for sure, I'm very confident we're going to be looking for a correction. And then by, I would say, the election, the market should either bottom and start the recovery move, or it could continue to dip a little bit past it before, I would say, like mid-November until the very end of November to set us up for a big... I would say either starting mid-November to December squeeze. If not, by the very start of December, we should be looking for a squeeze. So I hope that's as simple to understand as possible, guys. I'm trying to make this very understandable. That's my view of the market, a big corrective phase before we see a big recovery run. I think that's what's going to be happening for the next couple of months. For the QQQ, it's the same thing, essentially. So I don't know if the QQQ is done yet. We're either going to dip a little bit from here and then maybe make an attempt to try to get back up to these highs into early October. And then what could be happening is we we could be entering a corrective phase, whether we come all the way down to the 480 area. It depends on if we can try to break this support or not, or if we start dipping all the way down towards the support down here. It really depends on different factors. Will it be a big, sharp 10% correction all the way down to fill these gaps down here? Uh, I'm not 100% certain about the exact extent, but I do want to call out that um, if you take this key fib retracement chart like this, we could start off from the top up here and kind of like come down. Um, it's very possible that we we do end up retracing to the 0.5, so at least the 460 area could be coming. 475 to 460 for a little corrective phase. We could even could even be retesting the support right here. So if you take a trend line, we have this support to watch for just around here. Uh, we'll have to see about that, but I do believe we're going to be dipping at the least at 463, the points, uh, five retracement area appro approaching the election, if not a little bit lower. And then we should be starting our recovery move possibly after the election. So if that were to be the case, it's going to look like this. We get this dump approaching the election right over here. Then after the election slash FOMC, we start our recovery run. And this could start to slowly squeeze its way up for the end of the year for a nice little rally. Once again, back up to these highs, forming a giant cup and handle. So that's like uh, the general view. There's also another possibility that we, you know, we're about to start this like corrective phase like this. We may go a little higher and then we uh, we might start this corrective phase in mid-October and it may continue past FOMC. Uh, it could continue past FOMC until the next seasonality spike. And then we start our recovery run into like the middle of November and maybe the, the downside move could be extended a little bit longer for the end of the year massive squeeze to come just like that. So basically, in a nutshell, the same thing with the QQQ, I have the same view. What's going to happen is we we could hold up for another week or two for the markets, okay? But by mid-October, I expect us to start a big corrective phase approaching the election. From mid-October to the first week of November, I expect us to see big downside. I think it's going to be starting. And then by the election, after the election, we should be looking for the recovery move all the way until the end of the year. Or if it's not the election, if we're going to be dipping lower, we could dip past the election for a couple of weeks going into like mid to late November to set us up for an end of November to December short squeeze for the market to try to make a nice recovery move. So I hope that's clear. Basically, October, I am expecting a corrective phase approaching the election. For November, there's going to be a period of risk after the election. We'll see if we continue to dip or if we get a big bounce. But then by mid October by, excuse me, mid-November to December, I expect upside for the markets, another recovery run. That's what seasonality is suggesting. I think that's most likely going to be the case for SPY and the QQQ. So that's what I believe is going to be the most likely phase, at least the market's entering in. So we're going to bottom either approaching the election or maybe a little bit after the election. And then after that, we're looking for a big rally, a big squeeze to end the year. And I think that's going to be the most likely case. So that's my view of the markets, guys, uh, in a very, very simple nutshell. I'm trying to make it very, very simple. Uh, so with that being said, I just want to say I appreciate you guys so much for listening. Please have an absolutely incredible rest of the day. I'll see you guys very soon, at least on the next video. Uh, take care of yourselves, guys, and just know that this is my general view of the market for now. Have a good weekend. Enjoy your Saturday, and I'll be back tomorrow for another update about uh, SPY, NVIDIA, the QQQ, and the others. Thanks again, and peace out.